In his public sculptures inhabiting parks, gardens, plazas, subways, and libraries across the country, Tom Otterness has long tackled themes of money, religion, sex, and class that ripple through our national conversation. Like fairy tales or cartoons, Otterness's figures cast in bronze have a lovability and cuteness that belie their subversive edge and allow the artist to carry controversial subjects into the public landscape. Walking into Tom Otterness's worlds full of characters and creatures with their surprising disparities of size and scale and puzzling meanings is the artist's way of commenting on society. It's equally important to him that people of all ages feel welcome to reflect, play, and react honestly and with humor and imagination. Hey, I'm Tom Otterness. Uh, I, I made the real world in Battery Park City. I thought it'd be good to shoot here and we can see some of the small, I'm using some of the same small six inch figures that I used 40 years ago. A lot of the techniques come from early animation, cylindrical arms and unit heads and stuff that can move easily. And I tried to just boil down what I thought were the social types. I didn't want to be racially specific, so this this uh, smiley face was the solution for that. So I could make a universal person, but what are the universal classes of people that we deal with here in the city or in the world? And so what people really identify with are the smallest figures. And to be able to give them this kind of superhuman strength, you know, I can make a a little gal picking up a whole building. It's like Mighty Mouse. It's one of the joys of animation is that you can set up these, just give them enormous strength and energy and power. So normally I, I cast these sets of figures in five different types and it's, you know, my favorite rich people and then white collar workers, male and female, Blue collar worker is kind of a construction guy and a babushka hatted lady. Radicals who have no clothes and uh, pointed hats and cops. So I take these figures in and put them in warm water until they warm up enough that I can manipulate them. And then it's just like toys. You just can turn heads and hands and arms and legs. And so I could make, I could have a cop join this effort. So from this, um, these waxes are taken to the foundry and covered in, in uh, a special plaster and, and and then they're put in an oven and the plaster burns out and there's an empty space. They turn that mold over and they pour in bronze and anything that was wax, every little detail in the wax becomes bronze. There are different ways to come into Battery Park City to read the narrative of it. And if you come in from the DNA side, okay, it starts at the DNA chain and then goes down to the Adam and Eve scene, which is really the uh, scene of the monkeys, the mama monkey and the dad, and our daughter Kelly was about to be born. She was born a week before Battery Park City opened. And I was in full imagination about what would happen. But that was the start, you know, this idea of the Adam and Eve and this kind of evolution scene that starts with the, with the monkeys and then evolves and then you can follow the path from there. Um, and it sort of, in that scene, then it ends inside the head. You know, you follow the path all the way out and it ends inside the head. And I guess you could go the opposite way and then you read it from the head out, which makes sense too, you know? Everything just comes out of this kind of dream world of that big head. I grew up in, in Kansas and in Wichita at playing in a creek and and I thought, oh, I want to give kids in Manhattan some similar experience, have a little creek, but try to tell a story to them growing up 
in lower Manhattan about what the politics of the city is. And so having this layout of the city and, and these different class types, the body politic, the big head at one end, the big foot at the other, a fist, uh, to me from a long view it looked like a body and the center was the body of the city. When I went to present in Battery Park City, I was told make something like De Kref's the Alice in Wonderland from Central Park, which I that yeah, was a great inspiration for me, you know, to see how people engage with that. This is the food chain. Uh, if you can see the dog below, the dog's after the cat, the cat's after the bird, the bird's after the worm, and the worm is uh, resistant, sticking its tongue out at, at the end. But it's one of my favorite ones. I love how this stuff is held up, you know, it just gets better and better. You know, the patina and the, you can see how the, the bronze is actually wearing down, you know, and, and rounding up even more, you know, whatever edges there were are starting to smooth out. This was pretty free form, so it didn't have to hold to the theme everywhere and stuff doesn't make sense. That's perfectly okay. Uh, it is the real world and not, not much makes sense. So before the Battery Park City was uh, even instituted, I think, it was part on the beach out there. It was a sand lot, kind of an amazing scene of just rolling sand and the water. And then coming from, from uh, the water side, looking toward the city, then you, you saw the World Trade Center and all these places above the sand dune. It was like some strange Fellini movie or something that you're in where the city is coming out of the desert. And uh, a lot of the, a lot of artists hung out there just to take a break or started doing performances. I did a performance with a group of about 20 people um, as part of a series that they did out there. So that was very active. Art on the beach. Visit Battery Park City in Lower Manhattan and see almost two dozen examples of the art of our time, from installations and landworks to sculpture and memorials.